Hello, in today's video, we're gonna go over how to use stable warp fusion to make something like this. Of course, before we get started, if you'd like, subscribe, notification bell, shenanigans, do that please, it will help me make more videos, it'd be great. And now let's dive into it. So first we're gonna need to get access in order to get to this Google Collab. In order to get access, you're gonna to need to go to Patreon and go to Alex's Patreon page, which is just Alex backwards. And I subscribe to the $10 one for the $10 membership per month. And that gets me access to the nightly builds, which is what we're gonna be using today. There is a free public version, I believe, but it does not have near the capabilities that this one does. So first you need to go and subscribe to this so you can get access to the nightly build the best nightly build currently is this one and we're going to go into that so once you have that build we're going to go through this through the google collab because it's all google collab but i'm going to be able to show you how it's done through just google collab as well as locally so you can kind of determine what you want so i have my video and i have my model or checkpoint save tensors whatever in my Google Drive that I'm gonna be doing this on. Then once you have the Google Drive folder, so you can see I have it installed locally here, and I'm just gonna grab this, this Jupyter source file, I'm gonna put it into here. And now we have, now we're looking at, you know, beta of warp fusion, okay, or stable warp fusion. Now, it's important to note here that every video is different. Settings are never going to be the same. You have to tweak them, you have to experiment, with every single video you do. Okay, so this is not a one size fits all. I wanna make sure you understand that. All right, so first things first, as we're gonna be going through this with just online with Google Collab, but I'll do locally after, is we need to do the setup to get it started. Yes, I understand that the notebook requires high RAM. This is going to take up a lot. You might or might not have enough free RAM from the Google Collab. So you might have to buy credits. I'm going to connect to the Google Drive. And if you're running locally, you will not have to do it this way. So I'm going to let this connect. And then once that's done, it's going to allow me to open up some other stuff in the future. So, but this is the most important one to really start with because I'm going to need access to get paths. So starting with that, then it's going to install Xformers, dependents, GPU status, all of this sort of stuff. Now, the first thing we run into is we need to know what the width and height of our video or what we wanted to come out as. So I know that I am using vertical video for this. So I'm gonna do 540 by 960 because that is like one step down from 1920 by 1080 or vice versa. And I know that it will keep how it wants. Okay, awesome. So now we're connected, that's good. Now I'm gonna keep going. Now we have our video input settings, okay? So if I'm using Google Collab and I already have them in here, I'm gonna open up this folder, I'm gonna to go to Drive, My Drive, and now I have the path here. I'm gonna right click, Copy Path, and I'm gonna Control V. So this is what it might look like, okay? So we'll keep the extract and frame on one. And generally, that seems to work best. You can try skipping it, to skipping every other one if you want to and put it at two, but that's up to you. Then we're gonna scroll down. And so we're gonna get to the optical flow here, okay? And what's most important here is that if at any point you're using this notebook and you change the size of the video or you change the video entirely, you have to run this entire thing again because it will become weird, it'll become funky. So if you change, if you change the video, right, you have to change this. Um, or if, uh, yeah, if it's not vertical, if it's not gonna be the same, you're gonna have to change this. I would just do it anyway, regardless. For some weird glitches you'll run into. And then you'll just want to, when you run it again, make sure you force flow generation if you have, if you're using the same notebook, okay? It's probably best to just start over fresh. Don't use the same one so you don't have to worry about it because this will happen automatically. But if you do, make sure you force flow generation. And I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit when we start running it. 
then we have to put in the model path that we want to as well as make sure this says gpu and not cpu okay because we are using the gpu that we're renting from google so then we're going to right click this copy path and i'm going to go ahead and put that in there if you don't put anything in there it, it might i don't remember or not download the model for you but it's just better to have it yourself you know where it is same with control net models is if you're trying to do use a specific model for this it will download them automatically into your drive if you don't have them or at least it should last time i checked it did and then we're gonna keep going now we have content aware scheduling so we want to click this because we're going to be using captions okay and captions are going to basically help the ai figure out what it's looking at so it's going to analyze the video here to do that and then we want to make sure that we have make captions here and it's going to make a separate folder for us for for us to look at those captions and see if the ai did it correctly or not if it didn't or you want to be more specific you can go and change those captions and i'll show you guys where that is in this and it works the same way locally okay so then we're good here and now we're getting down to the prompts okay and i'm going to use some prompts that i used before but now what's important here is when you make a settings file with this one it's going to put quotes around these numbers okay you don't want quotes around the numbers if you keep them around them then the ai will just stick to the first prompts and it won't switch to any of the new ones so we have to make sure we delete those if you're using it from a settings file okay and then secondly, we want to make sure that we get rid of this comma that's here because otherwise it will throw it for a loop and it won't work at all. And we'll leave negative prompts as is. The most important thing when it comes to prompts for this is that you don't need to be overly specific on what you're doing. So this is more than enough um, adjectives, details, whatever, in order to do this. And we have our captions here okay and the captions it's what it's going to refer to when we run this okay and then we're going to get down into this little area and i'm going to explain a couple things so the most important things that you're going to want to play with in this okay you have your style strength schedule 0.9 comma 0.6 is pretty good i don't mind that you know depending if you want more or less you can bring this down uh, and you know 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 if you want to do that that will give you less of an effect flow blend is another thing that you can mess with one is pretty much as high as you'll go and then you can drop it down you know down to zero or in between there and that's going to allow you to really just kind of blend it with your prompt and then cfg scale is going to deal a lot with how much your how much the AI is going to rely on the prompt. So if you wanted to rely on the plot prompt more, you know, make it nine or make it a 10. Okay, sometimes you can make it an eight. So we can keep generally basic settings work fairly well, but these three settings are where you're gonna play with a lot. And there is a, a GUI or, or a GUI that will help you and I'll show you that in a second. And then in case you're doing stuff with faces, make sure you put this to one because we're only messing with one face, or if you're dealing with two, then you know, go with two faces. Now we get down into the control net, okay? Now, pretty much, this is set to work with faces, okay? I don't want to work with faces right now, so I wanna put this to zero, okay? If we start way at one, so that's gonna give it more emphasis on what that model is going to do. So I have this weight at one, but I'm gonna put it to zero. But if I just want to mess with like a dancer, like we're playing with this, depth and HED will do pretty well. You can use Canny if you want, but HED and Canny are very similar to each other, but I find that this works great. So we have a depth, you know, just a weight of one on both. This ends at one, this is at 0.8. Generally it works fine, okay? Laura's, so you can use them if you want to. Uh, for this, I'm not going to, but if you have any kind of Laura that you want to use, then you can put this that in here. And into your drive and then just make sure that you reference that Laura in the prompt up here. Now once we run this this GUI will pop up okay and then it will pretty much start diffusing and we'll get this going. So I'm going to start this 
and then I'm gonna pop back in at certain points to show you what's good and how things are working. So we can see here, we are in the generate obstacle flow and it just went through all 216 frames. And now it's doing a backward and forward check just to make sure everything's good. And then in a moment, you'll see the frames pop up down here. Now we can see that it went ahead and processed all these frames. And this is your flow map. Sometimes you might find some kind of weird ghosting thing that might be happening where there's like a shadow in your video. And that's probably because you didn't run another flow map and you have a previous one get, you know, getting injected into it. So if you might see the frames of a new video, but then you have different flow maps here, that's probably what happened. And now we're going into content or scheduling and it's analyzing the video. We're, we are going to see a graph here in a moment and that's going to kind of help you determine and will let you know how many captions that we actually have or will have once we go through the captioning process. So you can see here we have a couple spikes and so this means there's going to be at least two captions. Most likely there might be a few more um, and it's just going to you know kind of do that depending on the video if the camera moves anything like that different framing and that's going to kind of get you an idea of how many captions there are going to be. So we're going to scroll down a bit and now it's creating the captions here and I will show you guys uh, where those are. So now the captions are done. We're going to scroll down. It's going to have gone through all of this. If you have green check marks, then you're good to go. And now once we go a little further, you can now you can see the GUI. Now, when you want to change any of your settings for, hey, you know, you don't like the prompt that you did or you didn't like what was coming out, this is where you're going to change them. You won't be changing them up here. It'll always reference from here and you do not I repeat, you do not need to click play. We'll just restart the default settings of what was above. So if I wanted, you know, instead of making this a robot or whatever, if I made it like, you know, an Android as a different thing, instead of robot, this is where I would put it. Or if I want to change my, the step schedule to higher or lower the strength schedule or CFG, this is where I would change it. And then if you want to change the flow blend, you will change that here as well and everything else don't really worry too much. Sometimes you might want to play with the color match method up between lab or PDF. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see that it is starting to diffuse right here. So that's going to keep going. You can see that we have 217 frames and you're going to get updates on each frame and we'll update it right here. And last but not least, when the video is done, you if it's if you have this unchecked, uh, then it will create a video for you and you don't have to do it through Premiere or anything like that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't from my experience just because this thing can get stuck when it's pro uh, processing because of all the frames it might have to go to. So I generally will just make it in Premiere. So if we look at our Google Drive, you're going to see a folder called AI. I'm going to double click that. Stable Warp Fusion. We have our images out. Stable Warp Fusion again. And this is where all of the images are being saved. Okay, so this is where all they're going to be. Your settings are going to be right here. Currently, I don't know where the uh, captions are for this in the Google Drive. I could not find it. But as long as it works, generally it does a pretty good job right off the bat. You don't need to worry about changing it. So this is going to be for my people who run this locally. If you're going to run this locally, first, you need to prepare an environment relative here. This is going to take two to three minutes to get this booted up. So now that the prepare environment relative is done, I'm going to click on run relative. This is generally pretty fast, not as slow as the preparing the environment, but you want to make sure that you run them every time you run the, the collab. So you can see this Jupyter notebook came up and now we have this is an update for the relative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab this, this uh, local host here. I'm going to go and I'm going to go to connect to a local runtime. And then I'm just going to go ahead and control B that. And now I am running locally. There is a a setup that you have to do for this and if you join the discord which i highly recommend that you do because you're gonna run into problems i promise you 
that you need to have to go through the installation guide there and it's just going to be the best option that you have okay and once that's connected locally then you're just going to have to make sure that you change this can stay the same if it's the same video you just have to make sure you change where the video in a path is coming from and as well as where the model is coming from so for me what i'll do a lot of the time is we're just going to use any model it doesn't really matter so i'm going to go here i'm going to do a control c to copy and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. Now, I have to be specific on the model that I want to use. So I'm gonna use just a different model that I used here. And now it knows where to call this from. You have to make sure you put in the, the identifier at the end here and whichever video you're gonna use. So I'm gonna go back to my base clips. It doesn't really matter again, which one I use because I'm just doing this as an example. But I would do something like this, and then I would do like mad chad short dot mp4. Okay. So you only make sure that you change those. Everything else can be the same. I will show you, however, where the settings will be. So what's going to happen is this is let me bring make this fake. So this is basically where your warp fusion thing lives. Okay. So I've mine is saved warp fusion 11.4. I'm going to go to images out. I'm going to pick on one of these. It doesn't really matter. And then you have video frames captions. Okay. This is where all those captions are happening. So you see, I just have one. This is me. When I did a video of myself, it says in the end where I just was looking sad, standing in his living room. I wasn't standing, but that's fine. So I'd be like, oh, if I want to change this to sitting, then I can do that instead. And that is where you would change your, your captions, depending on what you have. And here's like another one. There's a whole bunch more. And, you know, I was using a different one, but you can see that there's different things depending on the frames, if it, again, if it, the frame changes or not. So that is where you will find those captions. Other than that, when it comes down to where your images are going to be, it's still going to be in the images out section. If you didn't see that, it's going to just kind of hang out down here and this is where it's going to be. Now, supposedly, if you say you are going and it messes up or you want to try something else, you can do a resume run. And that's going to pull. So say, you know, we did this one and it stopped at 39, like it did here. And then I would say, okay, cool. So this is where it stopped. I want to make sure I run from the latest and resume frame from the latest. If I want to start again from 39. Say we're going to use this as an example. It's not going to be correct, but let me use 39 as an example here. And if I say, cool, I want it to be 39. So right here. So I copied this. We're going to move this off screen. I'm going to say run to resume. Resume from frame. Uh, actually, I'll just go here. And then I can just say 39. And then it will know what I'm referencing. Okay. And then you can retain any overwritten frames if you want to. And then I would also start this frame range from 39 to 217. And while I haven't gotten this to work, I know other people have. So use at your own discretion. And again, I have to reiterate this. This will take time. Okay, this 30, these 39 frames that I'm using with Google Collab probably took 15 to 20 minutes. Even if you're running locally and I'm using a 4090, like it still takes time. When I was using a 3080, it still took a while. So have patience. If you don't like what's coming out of this, go ahead and, you know, you can click stop like I did. Go back up to the GUI here, change something, whether it's step schedule, styles ranked, CFG, maybe some negative prompts, your prompt itself, the flow blend schedule, or you can try some other stuff, see what they do, right? I only, I don't know this amazingly. I know it well enough. And then try running it again. Look at the first 20 frames. See if it's the direction you want to go. Is it coherent enough? Okay, cool. You're going to have to do a lot of experimenting and that's normal. So don't get frustrated. All right. Awesome. That's going to be it for this video. Again, like, comment, subscribe, and bell stuff. Please do it. It'll be great. And I look forward to seeing you next time.